This is Russ Anderson. This is the first section of a 12-part section on processing 360 VR images with synthize and also with current conventional compositing and rendering applications. So you're going to see kind of a whole look through an entire workflow to wind up producing 360 VR images that have inserted rendered elements. Despite the length of this tutorial series, and really partially due to it, we're really just going to be focusing on the VR aspects of it. And this isn't an attempt to describe everything possible and synthesize all the pieces of knowledge that you need to know in order to be able to handle the VR footage. So there are a lot of fundamentals that we rely on that are dealt with in other tutorials. And here we're focusing just on the VR part of it. So I know sometimes people want to see every button that they need to push, but that's just not really possible. So we're going to be working with this shot that was supplied to us nicely by the folks at 360 Heroes. Now they make a rig that holds multiple GoPro cameras. And so they're looking in all different directions and they have the software for keeping track of all that footage. And then there's some other applications that actually stitch that footage together to produce the 360 VR image that you see here, which is what Synthize processes. And this is a, a 2K HD sort of image, which is convenient for working with in the tutorial. I think in general, it's better if you can work from 4K images. It gives a more compelling viewing experience. And that's, that's available from these particular rigs as well. It's just not what we're working from here. So Synthize does work from these already stitched images. And they contain a view in every direction at the same time. And basically, the image is mapped onto the inside of a sphere. So all up at the top, this is basically all the North Pole. This part here at the bottom is all the South Pole. And then this is kind of straight ahead and each off to each side is, is looking behind you. And you'll actually see that sphere in Synthize later and you can actually export that to your other applications as well. So these kind of images are quite a bit different than the regular perspective view that you get out of a conventional camera. There is really no field of view to these images at all, in fact. So Synthize has the tools to, to work with these. Basically, many of the tools and operations in, inside of Synthize have been converted to work with these images, but not everything. And one of the things that's not is the main solver engine. And so what we're doing is using the Synthize image preprocessor to convert these 360 VR images to conventional linear images that you can then run through the solver, get a full 3D solve, and convert then back to a 360 VR set of images and tracker data and so on, which you can then even further expand. And one of the benefits of doing that is that as part of that process, you have the information available to be able to send images to your conventional rendering applications as regular images so they can work on them even if they don't support 360 VR images themselves directly. And then you can bring the images back into Synthize, convert back to a full 360 VR format and be able to composite things back together. And of course, it's also the case that if you do have a 360 VR camera inside of your rendering application, you can generally take advantage of that as well. So you have a bunch of different options available to you. So what we're going to be doing is working from the basic shot here, which is, I think, pretty much inherently stabilized based on the camera being attached to a rod to the front of the ultralight here. And we're going to be going first to something like this, where here's a 3D solve. And in fact, it's a stabilized 3D solve where we do have a full camera path. We have locations of trackers in the environment. And in fact, shortly after this, you have even more 
trackers throughout the entire environment. And ultimately, we work our way towards this, where here you have a 3D building set into the shot. And this then gets rendered using Blender and the images sent back and forth so that we wind up with a, a 360 VR layer for that for later compositing. And ultimately, you know, it goes through After Effects for that, for the compositing, and you wind up with something like this that's the finished product. So you get to see a, a good look at all the different steps that are involved in this and what some of the different options are and creative choices. So, hey, let's get started.